to the great American outrage machine is a remarkable thing. Do you speak the same language as your best friend? Could you be best friends if you didn't? These are important questions, given that our leaders are radically and permanently changing our country. Hope everybody had a great holiday weekend. Thanks for tuning in to TYT today. I'm Jackson White, co-founder and chief of content at Politiscope. And we're going to talk a little bit about Tucker Carlson, why he's really nothing special, and why you and no one you know should take him seriously, despite his far reach. Underneath it all, Tucker Carlson's just another cookie-cutter rich kid. A grilled cheese and tomato soup with a glass of milk on the side, spoiled trust fund baby, mediocre showman spewing white male insecurity in the form of news to millions of people across America on a weekly basis. A man rejected by the CIA due to his sheer mediocrity who yet somehow manages to call the highest ranking military officer General Mark Milley a stupid pig who wouldn't be where he is were he not a bootlicker and had a nepotistic leg up which is funny due to his backstory and how it also conflicts with his nightly persona. Tucker Carlson postures himself as a man of the people fighting against the establishment for which he's an ardent member. Tucker Carlson's birth mother left at six to France. His father then remarried to Patricia Carolyn Swanson, heiress to the Swanson frozen food fortune. Yeah, you know, the frozen foods that you see in practically every grocery store you've ever been to. A man of the people, my you-know-what. Having never truly needed to work a single day in his life, this man of the people, by his own admission, was not very good at school and attended a boarding institution at a young age. After that, he got into Trinity College and was rejected by the CIA upon his application. Shortly after, he got into print journalism, where he did pretty well. Tucker's television career began on CNN from 2000 to 2005. He also did work for PBS from 2004 to 2005 and MSNBC from 2005 to 2008. His career at Fox began in 2009 and the show we're all familiar with, Tucker Carlson Tonight, began in 2016 and still airs. He also was a founder of The Daily Caller, for which he sold his stakes in 2020. You're all like, oh, I'm against the globalist elite, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's not very convincing, to be honest. Why don't you go Yourself. Divided countries are easier to rule, and nothing divides us like the perception that some people are getting special treatment. Now, before you applaud that as a victory for feminism, consider some of the effects. Study after study has shown that when men make less than women, women generally don't want to marry them. In the year 2000, Hazleton's population was 2% Hispanic. Just 16 years later, Hazleton is majority Hispanic. The point is, this is more change than human beings are designed to digest. Tucker Carlson doesn't have a real solid set of political principles that he lives by. His segments are simply a masterful propaganda routine which provides for him a fat and juicy paycheck. A man who poses as some kind of fighter for the little guy, but is somehow a partisan hack for the Republican Party. And Tucker's Republican Party propaganda is simple. Instead of focusing on the real issues that people care about like health care, access to education, an improved infrastructure system, and the likes, focus on immigration, focus on cultural issues, endlessly talk about race and how the elites want to divide us by focusing on race, all the while wages fail to rise and the gap between rich and poor grows ever larger. In 2003, Tucker Carlson called Fox News a mean, sick group of people and even criticized Bill O'Reilly's show as demagoguery. But not too long after, he took a job with them. Last night we told you about the Biden administration's efforts to monitor and intimidate this show. On Sunday, we heard from a whistleblower within the U.S. government, someone with direct knowledge, who warned us that the NSA was reading our electronic communications, our emails and texts, and was planning to leak them selectively in an effort to hurt us. Tucker Carlson doesn't need the assistance of the NSA to ruin his reputation with the country. Having abandoned the concerns of the middle class here, they need millions of new voters and they need them fast. Otherwise, their party risks becoming a permanent minority. Replacing ungrateful citizens with obedient immigrants is their only hope. So their goal is to replace ungrateful citizens with obedient immigrants. But then again, by that same logic, wouldn't that make those who you deem ungrateful to your version of American exceptionalist idealism, disobedient partisans who must be dealt with at all costs? 
Because that's the nightly message. And that's the entire point of his propaganda. And the whole point of Fox News propaganda in general is he's joined with hosts like Laura Ingram, Sean Hannity, Lou Dobbs, who's no longer there, Stuart Varney, Fox and Friends, and the whole gang who make up the endless echo chamber of far right wing nonsense. Just opinionated nonsense, which is literally how it's defended in the court of law when pressed about spreading election fraud lies. This isn't serious. It's just an opinion show. Nobody in their right mind would take this seriously, so we can't consider it news. That's how it's defended, because that's what it is.